Uh, I met Glenn Bat. So I was in lots of the early productivity improvement programs, typically on large projects. I, I was on the uh, Chocolate Bio Project in 1979. Glenn Ballard, um, who co-founded LCI, uh, was the productivity administrator on that project. And Glenn had come from a different route. He was a great books guy out of St. John's, can mobilize Aristotle onto the project. And very smart guy, uh, couldn't find a job to make any money, starts off as a welder's helper, and uh, that's where he is, and, and, and played work up from there. And uh, so he has a deep understanding, and he was very frustrated by his inability to get work done on projects. And so Glenn and I stay friends, and um, eventually there comes a time when a, um, there's a request to write a new manual for form and planning. And it's an old idea. I'd written some of the AGC's uh, supervisory training stuff on form and planning uh, earlier. And, um, and the idea was that if foremen made better assignments, the work would be more productive. That was the, that was the reasoning. And, and Glenn and I thought about it, and we couldn't think of anything new to say. There's lots of manuals on form and planning. And so Glenn came up with this idea of why don't we go see how well planning works? And so we said, well, planning's job is to predict the future, and so let's see how well the foreman's weekly work plan predicts the condition of the job one week in advance. And we did that, <clears throat> and we, it took some time to figure out how to do that. We had to work with foreman in many cases. They might say, next week we're going to hang light fixtures in the dining room, and we'd say, are you going to hang, let's see, eight of them, or are you going to hang all of them? Saying you're going to hang fixtures in the dining room is not actually predicting the condition of the job. It's telling us the neighborhood where you're working. We want to know what's going to be finished on the job next week. And we rated that done or not done. If there were eight fixtures that they said they were going to get done, they got seven of them. We said, no, you didn't get it done. Now, we did that because we were suspicious, particularly in the process industry, of earned value being used as a kind of cash flow thing and not really representing the state of the job. But we got really lucky because what when the guy said I was going to fix eight, finish eight fixtures, then that was when that work would be handed off to the next crew. Well, the answer was 400 plus weekly work plans, average form in 15 years in the business, jobs you'd know the name, com project, companies you'd know the names of, if not the projects, well-run projects, not necessarily great projects, not not really bad projects, projects. Uh, the answer was 54% of the things that foremen said they were going to get done next week, they actually got done. Now, that's, that's a, that you'll have whatever reaction you have to that. Uh, people in the industry frequently say, yeah. so if there were 100 tasks that were on the foreman's weekly work plan on this project this week, they got 54 of them done. doesn't mean their productivity is low. They get 100% of, of 54, they get 80% of, of 46 or, or 30 or some number, they don't do anything on some other task, and they do a bunch of work that wasn't on the weekly work plan to keep their people busy. Okay, so, so, so it's not like, it's not like we're, that this is necessarily the evidence of a bad project. This was the average. It's like pie. We, we, we had one recently from a pump storage plant in India. The opening PPC percent plan complete was 54 percent. We didn't we didn't rank big tasks or little tasks. A task was a task, right? It was done or it was not done. That's all we did. Uh, I don't I'm not here to challenge what yours is in your organization, but you can go out and you can measure it, and you can go see how well you can do what you say you're going to do every week. That and that's what we started. And what happened then is we we realized that. We also found that the major reason work wasn't getting done was that it wasn't in a ready condition to be done when it was assigned. It was on the CPM. The project manager told the superintendent, you're supposed to get that done. He said, I'll try. He told the foreman. The foreman said, I'll try. And, and so uh, it got onto the weekly work plan because it was supposed to be done, but not because it was ready to be done. And so we said, well, if you want to improve your planning reliability, quit making bad assignments. Just say no. I was an officer in the CBs, and we didn't say no to anybody. You know, uh, can do is the motto of the industry. It's the motto of the CBs. That's kind of the way we are. And the idea that a foreman would say no was a radical act. It still is a radical act. But it reminded, it did two things for us. Uh, one is, it gave, we realized 
that we had put a, our finger on a different difference between projects and manufacturing. We always say manufacturing, they make a lot of things. Projects, we only make one thing. One other difference is that work moves in a manufacturing between the specialists by the way you design the line. Work moves in a project between the specialists by your, the administrative act of making an assignment. And if your assignment system isn't under control, your, your project isn't under control. So that's one difference. That, that's one thing that we did. The, the second thing that happened, though, is this idea of saying no reminded us of what engineer Ono was doing in Toyota, stopping the line rather than releasing a defective part downstream. Because in manufacturing, they know the consequence of, of, a, of a bad part getting embedded in something and going way downstream before you discover it. So the rule in Toyota was stop the line rather than release a defective part. Well, that was kind of the rule we had. We said, don't make a bad assignment, just say no. Radical act, difficult to pull off in organizations today. But that's, that's where we started. So what happens then is, so that's, we eventually then uh, come up with what's called the last planner system. And the last planner system is a planning system that's designed to produce predictable workflow and rapid learning. 